Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Great, great sight. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Sister Nikita, and I'm so excited that you decided to stop in with us here at the Liberty, at the Liberty Outreach and Life Collaboration. collaboration. Okay, listen. Okay, listen. Look at our friends. Good morning, friends. Minister D and D in the house. And we want you to be in the house. So listen, here's a few things for you to do. If this is your first time tuning in, I need you to text the word new. Hit E W to four four three three four seven six six five eight. And just like Minister D and D and Donnie are in the place, we want you to be in the place. So plan your visit by texting the word plan. P L A N to four four three three four seven six six five eight. You don't want to miss out on all the wonderful things that our collaboration is doing. So make sure that you visit our website. Guess what? You can also subscribe to our Facebook and YouTube channel so you don't miss up. And listen, for everybody out there in Washington, good morning in the comment section. Because we want to know that you're here and we're interacting with church. So we want to talk back with you. And last but not least, just like you tuned in, there is someone out there. Who absolutely, absolutely positive, 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 positive needs to hear what's going to happen, happen today. today. So we need you so to, share, to share, 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 and like, and like this, this stream. Okay? Okay. 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 Again, good morning, good morning and, welcome, and welcome, 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 welcome. So we have a few so announcements for you on this morning. This morning. All, All month long, long it has it been has This been, Is this Us, is a, a dynamic, dynamic sermon, sermon series and, and teaching, teaching, teaching about the about family, the family dynamics. dynamics. Listen, you don't want to miss the sermon on today because Pastor, Pastor Kevin is coming and we're coming absolutely, and we're excited, absolutely excited, excited for what he's going to talk about. And lastly, don't forget to tune in on Tuesdays, okay? Last Tuesday, Minister A took us all the way in with the family. And if you missed it, guess what? It's okay. Okay. Go back to YouTube, go back to, YouTube, go back to, Facebook, go back to Facebook, and tune in. And tune in. Every, Tuesday Every Tuesday morning, get morning, up with, get God, up with and God and get up with us up as we call in at 6 a.m. For, for, for prayer and fasting, and fasting, on, fasting Tuesday. on Tuesday. All the information, All the information is, on the is on the screen. If you've never joined, you never I promise you, 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 won't be disappointed. So join us on Tuesday. And on Tuesday evening, TNT is back in full effect. And this Tuesday, we have yet another dynamic teaching on family. So you, family, don't so you don't want to miss it. Tune, miss in, it. Via Tune in via live stream. Or please, or the, doors please the doors are open. Come on in and Come join us. And join us in person. We can't wait to can't see wait you. To see Guess what, everybody? Guess what, everybody? Liberty, Liberty is turning is seven. seven. Thank you, God, for seven beautiful years. And if you don't know, seven is the number of completion, okay? So this year, our theme is homecoming. And as you can see on the screen, we have some amazing things coming up every Sunday. So you definitely don't want to miss it. Come in person, please. Come and celebrate with us all month long as we give God glory for seven beautiful years that he has given to liberty. And at the end, in of the celebration, of the celebration. We, are still going to we are still going to celebrate so get your tickets so get your now tickets come now. on out come to our anniversary crafty sunday june 26th and you don't and want don't to miss want it. All you can it. eat you crabs. Can crabs. Food. You see all the information, all on, the the information on the flyer. Get with it. With Sign up. Sign go to www.libertyoutreachcenter.org forward slash L-O-C events. And all your information is there. And happy birthday. Happy birthday to Sister Amanda. We're absolutely excited. It's your birthday. Celebrate yourself. It's your birthday. Happy, happy birthday with love from your LOC and LNC family. And last but not least, there are several ways that you can definitely be a blessing to the ministry. As you can see on your screen, you can do it online. You can use Cash App, Giveify, or you can absolutely mail it in. Whatever God lays on your heart, be in obedience and do it Cheerful, do it cheerful because God loves, because God loves a, cheerful a cheerful giver. And so let's get so into let's it. Get service is here. Service is We're here. absolutely We're excited. excited. Let us prepare excited. our hearts and our minds and our minds for what God has to share God with, us, share on with us on this morning. Amen. Amen. Grand rising. Grand rising. Again, welcome to Liberty Outreach Center. 
Hallelujah. Today is Sunday, May 22nd, 2022. We've never seen this day before. Let's give it a hand clap for this brand new day. Hallelujah. If we could all stand for the reading of the word this morning, if we could all stand for the reading of the word this morning, if you're able, if you're able, please stand. Hallelujah. Today's scripture is coming from Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Can I say that one more time? For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing upon the reading of the word. Amen. 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 Let's go before the throne this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We just come before you again, Lord God, to say thank you, Lord. We thank you. We bless you. We praise your holy name. Hallelujah. We'd rather be nowhere else, but we just want to come and celebrate you, Lord God. We just thank you for the things that you do for us. We thank you just for being you, Lord God. We just love you. We celebrate you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your love. Hallelujah. Thank you for traveling mercies, Lord God. Thank you for the air that we breathe, Lord God. Hallelujah. The tongue that speaks with, Lord, that we speak with, Lord God. Just We just thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, that we just ask that you just send an anointing upon this place this morning. We ask that you just touch those that are on their way here, Lord God. We ask that you touch those that are out there watching via live stream, Lord. Whatever the, the needs that they, they may need, Lord God, touch them, Lord God. Heal them. Go ahead and just cover them, Lord God. Hallelujah. Because we know that you will. Hallelujah. We are praising you for that, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, we just ask that you also bless the speaker of the house this morning, Lord God, because I know we are in for something very special, Lord God. Bless his word that you have provided through him, Lord God. Hallelujah. And we will be obedient and receive what you have given him, Lord God. Hallelujah. We are so excited on today, Lord God, because we know that today is going to be a life-changing event. Hallelujah. It's going to be a shift that's going to happen, Lord God. And we just thank you for that shift, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you for that shift change, Lord God. Hallelujah. Whether it be in our life or somebody else's life, hallelujah. Somebody needs a shift right now, Lord God. And we thank you for that shift, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, we just bless your holy name on this morning, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just ask that you just continue to love on us. Continue to hold us and protect us, Lord God. Hallelujah. Protect our leaders, Lord God. Cover our leaders, Lord God. Hallelujah. You know their needs, Lord God. Hallelujah. Cover their needs right now in the name of Jesus. Lift the burdens off of us, leaders, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, off of our partners, Lord God. Let those burdens go. Hallelujah. We're dropping chains today. Again, like I said, there's going to be a shift. Hallelujah. So we are welcoming that shift. We bless you, Lord God. We are so excited. Hallelujah for what you're going to do for us. Starting today, Lord God. Hallelujah. We just bless you, Lord God. We claim that, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just ask these and all things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, y'all. Give the Lord a hand for what he's about to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're just going to continue to welcome him into this place, Lord God. We welcome you. Hallelujah. And to this place, Lord God. Come into this broken vessel, Lord God. Fix us. Heal us. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name. We welcome you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Hey. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift. So we lift Hallelujah. Our hands and we lift our hearts. As we lift our hearts. As we offer up this praise. Hallelujah. This praise unto your name. Come on and welcome him, y'all. Welcome him. 
Welcome into this place. Not only this physical place, but your place. Hallelujah. Welcome your soul. Hallelujah. Into Heal this us, Lord God. Give vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we live our hands as we live our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name hallelujah come on and welcome him hallelujah welcome into this place oh welcome welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people so we lift our hands as we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name hallelujah come on and welcome him y'all yes welcome into oh bless your holy name oh welcome welcome into this broken vessel you desire you desire to abide in the praises of so we lift our so hands. Lift Hallelujah. Our hands. As we lift our hearts, we Lord God. Our As we offer As up. We offer up. Yeah. Praise unto your name. Hallelujah. So we lift our hands. So, so we lift our hands. As we lift our hearts. As we offer up this praise unto your name. Hallelujah. So we lift our hands. So we lift our hands. As we lift our hearts. As we offer up this praise. offer up this praise unto your Hallelujah. So as we offer up. As we offer up. This praise unto your name as we offer up, as we offer up yeah. praise unto your name. Hey, as we offer up, as we offer up this praise unto your name as we offer up this praise. Hallelujah. Just think about that. Offer up that praise this morning. Offer up that praise to him this morning as we offer up this praise unto your name. Hallelujah. As we offer up the praise unto your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you love the name of Jesus? How many of us know that there's power behind the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. We love that great name. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name, Jesus. We love to call your name. It is something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name your great name we love to yeah. call your, your name, name. it's something we cannot explain, we cannot explain. That, happens that happens when we proclaim, when we proclaim your great name your great, your great. Your great. Your great. Your great. Your great. Your great. Jesus, 
no other name in Jesus the stronger when we call on you things change when when we call on your name yeah say King Jesus no other name King Jesus the stronger when we call on you things change when when we call on your name Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. How many of you know that this morning? There's power in the name. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name. Come on, help me out, y'all. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yeah, there's power. Power in your name. Yeah. Cause there is power, there is power in the name of power Jesus. in the name, power in your name. Yeah, cause things change when things change when when we call your name. Things change when Hallelujah. Things change when. Yeah, cause I'm free. I'm free when yeah, I call you, Jesus. cause I'm free when, I'm free when I call, call His name this morning. Name. Said I'm free when, I'm free when I call you, Jesus. Said I'm free I'm when, when I call Hallelujah. Your name. Said when I call Your name. When I call Your Hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. When I call Your name. I get joy when I call your name. When I call your name. Hallelujah. I'm set free. I'm set free when I call your name. I'm healed. I'm healed when I call your name. I get joy when I call your name. Hallelujah. When I call your name. Yeah. I'm alive when I call your name. Oh, I get joy when I call your name. I get peace when I call your name. Said when I call your name. Hallelujah. Hey, so tell me who can stand before us. But when we call on that great name, said when I call your name, I get joy when I call your name. The chains fall when I call your name. Hallelujah. Said when I call your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We call your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. When we call Things your name, change God. when we call Hallelujah. your name, Lord God. There's a shift yes. when we call your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Healing takes place when we call your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We get joy when we call on your name. Your name. Demons flee when we call your name. That's right, don't stop. Says when I call your name. When I call Hallelujah. your name. Hallelujah. Said when I call your name. When I call your name. I am free when I call your when name. When I call your name. Says when I call your name. Somebody need that reminder. I am healed when I call your when name. I call your name. I feel good when I call your when name. I call your I get joy when I call your name. When I call your name. Said when I call your name. I call your name. Hallelujah. 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 We love to call yes, on that great Jesus. name. Bless you. Bless you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Repeat after me. Let's just give him a sweet savor this morning. Hallelujah. That's all you got to say. Hallelujah. Let's do it two more times. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Don. If we can just take this opportunity and just lift your hands wherever you are, whether you're watching from home or you're here in person, just lift your hands. Today, we're surrendering everything to him. We're casting all of our cares, all of our problems, all of our issues, all of our circumstances, all of our difficulties, all of our adversities, we're giving it all to him. And we're asking the Lord for strength so that we do not grow weary of doing good. That we do not grow tired 
of everything that we have experienced in this past week, that we have a God that we serve. And he promises, Eve, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. That this is the day that the Lord has made. And we come to rejoice and we are glad in it. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we come to rejoice and we are glad in it. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we come to rejoice and we are glad in it. There is no other God like him. There is no other God that loves us the way he does. There is no other God that gives us the peace that he gives us. There is no other God that is as good at, to us as any. There is no other God who is kind to us. There is no other God who is continually faithful to us. There is no other God. There is no other God that is so gentle to us. And I'm talking about a God that we can go and lay our heads in his bosom and he will wrap his arms around us and that we will feel his love, his loving presence, his love, his love. We can feel his grace and his mercy. We can feel all that he has for us. There is no other God like him. I want to say to all of you this morning that Jesus loves you. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're feeling. I don't know what's going on with your children. I don't know what's going on with your spouses. I don't know what's going on on your jobs. I don't even know what's going on in church right now. I just want to inform you this morning that Jesus loves you. And let me tell you this, there is no other love like Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can. I want to welcome all of you to Liberty Outreach Center and Life Nation Church as we continue to come together and give God the best praise that we can give him, a God that we can go and worship him in spirit and in truth. I want to let you know that there is a sweet spirit in the house right now. And we want the Lord to have his way, to do whatever is necessary to set us free, to set our minds free, to set our hearts free, to set our spirits free, so that nothing, nothing will separate us from him, from the love of God. Thank you, Lord. Have your way in this place. I want to welcome all of you, whether you're here in person or you're watching from home. Thank you for allowing us to come each and every Sunday to pour into your spirits so that you will lead your lives differently after today. If there were some challenges that you, can I just say to you all real quick, last week was a rewarding week. And I hope and pray that no matter what your circumstances may have been, it was still a rewarding week for you. You know why I wanted to, you can say that? It's because you pressed your way to be here today to receive what the Lord has for you, right? And I am praying and hoping that you open your minds, your hearts, and your spirits to receive what he does have. Even if it's just one thing, just receive it and run with it. Are you with me? If you have your Bibles, I'm not going to be before you long. If you have your Bibles, turn to Isaiah chapter 26, and I'm going to read for your hearing just two verses, three and four. Isaiah chapter 26, verses three and four. If you are able to stand, stand to your feet as we give reverence to the Father. And the word of God reads like this. This is according to the words recorded by the prophet Isaiah. You will keep in perfect peace. Those whose minds are steadfast 
because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. Not for a period, forever. Not for today, forever. Not for just yesterday, forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself is the rock eternal. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to say to all of you, I think Pastor TJ set me up. Because as you know, we've been going on with this This Is Us series. And I think that he and Minister D selected what they wanted to select, and they left me with this one. So here's what we're going to talk about today, y'all. We're going to talk about there is hope after divorce. There is hope after divorce. If you're at home, just post in the comment section, there is hope after divorce. If you're here in person, just say to yourself, if you are a divorcee, just say to yourself, place your hands on yourself and just tell yourself, there is hope after divorce. Now, I want to say to you, I'm not sure whether I am really qualified to talk about divorce today because I don't know what it is to be divorced. My wife and I, Joe and I, we be, will be married 27 years this coming July the 29th. And so, now I'm not saying that it did not come with adversity and issues and circumstances, but I don't know if I'm really qualified to talk about divorce. I'm, I'm believing that God has given me what is necessary to help those married couples, watch this, to not even think about divorce, and then those who are divorced to let them know that there is healing and hope. Are y'all with me? Now watch this. I do have some friends who are divorced. I have, I've had conversations with people um, who have divorced, right? Some of them are on their second marriages. Some of them are even on their third marriage. Watch this. And so even looking at that, I don't, don't know, Michelle, I really don't know if I'm qualified to really talk about this. Uh, nonetheless, watch this. I didn't want to talk about, sometimes I don't like talking about divorce with those who have been divorced because the conversation, watch this, would lead to some things that I don't even know that I really want to make the time to engage in. Are you with me? Because when those conversations, what comes up is bitterness. What comes up is anger. What comes up is frustration. What comes up is unforgiveness. What comes up is resentment. What comes up is hate. What comes up are years of rebuilding their lives after divorce. What comes up is all the counseling that they had to go through after they divorced their husband or their wife. But listen to me. If counseling doesn't exist, what will happen is that you will take the same behavior, the same attitude, the same issues, the same problems into the next marriage, into the next relationship. And if you're not careful and you have children, that behavior will have some impact on their lives as well. And so there's just so much that we have to think about that those who have been divorced, they have to think about. But as I prayed, the Lord dropped in my spirit to give divorcees, couples who have divorced, to give them hope, to let them know that there is a better tomorrow. That divorce doesn't have to be years of trying to figure out what one or the other did when they already know really what went wrong. Are y'all with me? They can have faith and hope that love can and will exist again. Are y'all with me? Now, it's important to know that there are reasons why people divorce. In fact, I need you to catch this. 50% of married couples divorce for some reason or another. Can I share some of those reasons with you? Watch this. They, they divorce because of infidelity or extramarital affair. They divorce because of trouble with finances. They divorce because of lack of communication. They divorce because of constant arguing. That's just a few, but watch this. They, they divorce because of weight gain. 
That moment, that the moment when they got married, they were all slim, and that the, 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 the ladies were in their, their, their wedding dress, and they had their Coke bottle shaped, and, and the brother was in his suit, and his physique, e, his physique was looking real good on that wedding day. But after some years go by, and they pick up some weight, then all of a sudden the way you felt on your wedding day is not the same way you feel. Oh, no, no, no. Are y'all with me? People divorce because of unrealistic expectations. You know what happens when we put expectations on one another? When we don't fulfill those expectations, disappointment sets in. I need y'all to wake up. Watch this. Divorce happens because of lack of intimacy. It, they, they divorce because of lack of equality. What do you mean, Pastor Kevin? That means that you have one spouse that feels that they are carrying more of the weight than the other. Oh, boy. I'm helping some married folk in here, too. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. They, they divorce because they're not being prepared for marriage. And that's why, Minister D, premarital counseling is necessary so that you can talk about some things that you don't want to have to find out once you get married. Do you know how many people bring so much baggage into their marriage and then they try to counsel themselves while they are going through? And it is impossible for anyone to counsel themselves or counsel their marriage when they are bringing baggage that they don't know why they are even bringing it or have behavior of why they don't even know why they have certain behaviors. Are you with me? People divorce because they have gotten married too young. <laughs> they divorce because of irreconcilable differences. What do you mean, Pastor Kevin? Because they look at differently, look at money differently, how they manage money. They look at parenting differently, how they should parent. Watch this. They look at how they should discipline their children differently. And people divorce because of that. They divorce because of addiction, whether it's drug addiction or sex addiction or gambling addiction or shopping addiction or prescription medication addiction. They divorce for those reasons. Are y'all with me? And they divorce because of physical, verbal, mental, and emotional abuse, or better yet, all of the above. And let me just put a sidebar right here. If you are in a marriage or a relationship where there is abuse, abuse is, is, is existing there, I want to encourage you to get out now. Get out now because some outcomes have been fatal. Are y'all with me? I'm being real with you this morning. This is necessary that you get this. Watch this. But there is a resolution if there is a willingness and desire. Watch it. The Bible says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. That's probably the one ultimate word right there. Many people divorce because nobody wants to listen. In fact, if you're not careful, you have some that would go back years or weeks or months reminding the other person of what they did wrong or what they said to them or how they handled them. They'll go back and harp on those things, never letting it go, and then telling each other, I'm right, you're wrong. Yeah. Are y'all with me? And then we say things that we may regret later. Are y'all with me? That we say things, we degrade each other, we knock each other, we talk, and then we have some single friends, and we go talk to our single friends about marital problems. Our single friends can't help us with marital problems. They have no clue. If they've never been married, what can you tell me? Are y'all with me? But we have to learn to listen to one another and stop talking over one another. But if we can just shut up for a minute. Are y'all with me? Shut up for a minute and let the other talk so that you can at least set, give them a, a, an ear where you are willing to listen. Oh, my goodness. 
I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm on this or not. That's why I said I don't know if I'm really qualified to talk about divorce. But watch this. But as Christians, we should know how to operate differently. Now, that don't always happen that way, right? It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't always happen that way. Some other things normally happen. But if we were to manage things accordingly, right, according to the words of the Apostle Paul, watch this. He writes, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or nude. It does not, or rude, rather. Ooh, nude, rude. It, it does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. Are y'all with me? Watch this. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Listen to me. Could you imagine if we lived our life? That's a Jesus love right there. If we lived our lives with a Jesus love, what we would be able to overcome, how we would be able to experience true victory if we just love like Jesus. Could you imagine what the world would look like? Could you imagine what other mar or marriages would look like if we just love each other with Jesus' love? Not our love. That's fleshly love. See, our love is limited. But Jesus' love is unlimited. And so if we love each other with a Jesus love, watch this. That Jesus love will help us to be patient and kind to one another. And not reminding each other of our wrongs. That Jesus love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Jesus love, Jesus love does not demand to have your way. Listen, y'all know how we have temper tantrums in some marriages, right? If we don't get our way, then we have a temper tantrum, right? I didn't get my way. What do you mean we can't do this? What do you mean we don't have this? I want my way. My way is the best way. Oh, Lord, I don't know if I'm... I kept saying, I don't know if I'm really qualified to talk about this. See, I'm helping married couples and divorcees this morning. I need the married couples to stay married and then those who are divorcees to have hope. Are y'all with me? I hope y'all catching that. I hope y'all watching. Love rejoices. Y'all with me? Love, Jesus' love, helps us to know the truth and accept the truth. We all say we want the truth. Be honest with me. Be transparent with me. You want me to be honest, but you can't handle me being honest with you. And when I'm honest, now you have a problem with me because I had to tell you something that you really wasn't ready to hear. Let me let that sink in for a second. Watch this. Yeah, it is the truth. Watch this. Love never gives up. A Jesus love never gives up. When you, when you saw some of those reasons of why people divorce, and you those reasons, and wait a minute, hold up. Other than maybe infidelity and extramarital affairs, but that other stuff, we can fight, figure this thing out somehow. I'm sure there's a way that we can talk about this thing. If it requires us to go to counseling, let's go to counseling. But baby, let's figure this out. When Jonelle and I got married, I told her it was for keeps. You know why it was for keeps? Because I, no, I, 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 had, I had no desire to have to plan another wedding. I didn't want to go and look out and, and, and get another tuxedo. I didn't want her to go and worry about another dress. No, if we had to do it all over again, um, uh, Pastor Angel, we would have gone away and had a destination wedding and invited who we wanted to invite. Oh, Lord Jesus, I don't know if folks are getting this. I told y'all I don't know if I was really qualified to talk about divorce. Love is hopeful, a Jesus love. It's hopeful. Even when things are not going right in your marriage, Jesus' love will still give you hope to fight a good fight of faith, knowing that if God is in this marriage, we can overcome anything. It is a Jesus love that helps us endure all of our pain and our hurt and our disappointment and our issues and our adversity. It is that Jesus love. See, as a, as a pastor, that's why I will never officiate a wedding 
without you going through premarital counseling. Are you with me? Because it is in premarital counseling where you learn about one's faith, one's family, and one's finances. Faith is necessary, especially if you raise children together. You have to know how you're going to raise that son or that daughter. You can't decide it's going to be one way. We're going to do it this way, my way, because my way is the best way. No, you got to talk about that thing. And in premarital counseling is when the time you do it, because you don't want to learn about it when you get into the marriage. Are y'all with me? Watch this. Family. Jesus, Lord, help me with this one. Hmm. There are some behaviors and some belief systems that we all have that we sometimes bring into our marriage because of what we picked up from family members. If you got a daddy that's abusive or a mama who's abusive, guess what happens? Children have a tendency of emulating their parents. And if they emulate their parents, don't be surprised of why some of them are abusive themselves once they get married. You didn't see it coming. You saw, you know about it, and, but you never talked about it, right, right, right? And once you start to talk about it, especially in premarital counseling, that may be some red flags that would come up at that very moment. Oh, I don't know if we should get married right now. Maybe we should wait and, and work on some things and talk some things out because I don't want to have to take this into my, my marriage and then we have children and then my children have to be concerned about a parent being abusive, not only to the other spouse, but to them as well. We got to be able to talk about those things. There's some family stuff that we took baggage into these marriages and depression and anxiety and stress. Family members carrying that from generation to generation, bad managing of finances from generation to generation. Can I be, I'm being real. I'm being real and honest with you. These things exist and premarital counseling is necessary. That's where you learn about all of that stuff. And let's talk about the money. Let's talk about the money. If one spouse doesn't have the gift in managing money and the other does, let the one who managed the best manage the money. Right? There are some things that I'm good at, and there are some things that Jonelle is good at. Jonelle is my wife, for those who might not know. But there are some things she's good at, and there are some things I'm good at, right? I'm good at managing money better than Jonelle. Not that she can't, but she decides, hey, you handle that piece, I'll take care of this piece. In fact, I told Jonelle, we ain't getting married until we cancel your college debt. Y'all know we didn't get married until the debt was canceled. Because I did not want to bring, I didn't want her debt to come into our marriage. And guess who would have been responsible for taking care of it? Because I managed the money? Me. Y'all with me? I said I wasn't qualified. Did I say that earlier? I don't know if I'm qualified to talk about divorce. I'm trying to help married couples to stay married. And I'm trying to help those who are divorced to have hope again. Are y'all with me? Watch this. And it's in premarital counseling where you get the tools and the resources so when problems arise, when they arise, you know how to maneuver through them. Joe and I went through premarital counseling, Deaconess Yvonne. It was the worst premarital counseling I've ever experienced in my life. I learned nothing about my faith. I learned nothing about my family. I learned nothing about my family. We didn't even talk about it. I, to this day, I can't even tell you what we talked about. Now, God bless his soul. I love him. I'm not going to say his name, but God bless his soul. But did not help us at all. And that's why when we started to have problems in our marriage, we could not reach for anything because we had nothing to reach for. Are y'all with me? See, going through premarital counseling will help you rise above your differences and your problems. It is those problems where you will learn to change and grow and mature something about you. Listen, if you don't go through anything, how? Oh. Differences or problems we should be able to work out before the children arrive on the scene. Joe and I, 
as I already mentioned, we'll be married 27 years in July. Now, the first 10 years of our marriage, Joe stayed home with Aaron and Jordan. First 10 years, we were in agreement that's what we were going to do. And I'm grateful that God allowed us to be able to do that because when I look at my children now, Aaron and Jordan, I am grateful to God how he has kept them and they are good children. I don't always agree with them, but they're good and I am grateful and I am blessed. We are blessed to have them as children. Watch this. And God entrusted them into our care. And so I'm grateful. But listen, listen, listen. In those first 10 years of our marriage, we were on the verge of divorce. God knows how many times. Can I be real with you? So since she stayed home and I went out to work, there would be days I would come home from work and then I'm running why, why wasn't dinner ready or why wasn't the house clean? And I begin to. Come on. Dinner wasn't ready. The house wasn't clean. Her hair was all over her head. I was like, Lord, gee, this is not the woman I married. Who, who is this person? Oh, God, this is a demon from, oh, Lord Jesus. I'm, I said I wasn't sure if I was qualified to talk about divorce. I'm trying to help married couples stay married, and I'm trying to help divorce see that there is hope. Are y'all with me? But I would come home, and I, and I wonder why all this wasn't done, Michelle. I was having a problem with it. I go, and I bring in the money. I pay the bills and everything. Whatever you need, I make sure you had it. Why? I don't understand. And, I, and there were many days I had to call on the name of Jesus. This is the woman I believe you sent to me, but you didn't tell me about this. But then the Lord had to correct me. He had to correct me, Yvonne. And the reason he corrected me, because she was home all day raising Aaron, who was a crime baby. And I wonder why dinner wasn't ready. And I wonder why her hair was all over the place. Because that boy cried. He cried all day, Vanessa. He, he just cried. He cried. He was like, oh, Jesus, please make him be quiet just for a moment. Shut up for a moment. <laughs> oh, Dad, you're going to remember those days. I'm going to take you back. But watch this. And so I went through all of that. And so for the first 10 years of our marriage, we had problems. We were on the verge of divorce, y'all. Because of what we didn't get in premarital counseling, therefore not knowing what we needed to know, though there was no handbook for marriage. Right? And so we tried to live our life. We brought baggage into the marriage that we never talked about before the marriage. Faith, family, finance. Jo Jonelle is a Catholic at heart. She grew up Catholic. She's a Catholic at home. I grew up Baptist. She was used to being in church for one hour. I was used to being in church for almost three. And so when she started coming to church with me, she was like, I'm not used to this. Why didn't we talk about this in premarital counseling? But we went through all of this on the verge of divorce, scuffling, arguing, frustration, unforgiveness, resentment, all of that stuff. Now, we were still young. There was no weight gain. We were still young. And then we got a little older. <laughs> but we went through all this stuff. But here's what I'm grateful for, Talisha. I am so grateful that God took us from the verge of divorce to a place of hope. Watch this. Not just hope for us, but hope for our children. Do you know Jordan never wanted to be married or have children? Because when she was young, we didn't know that when we would argue and fight, that she was awake and hearing all of it. 
She never told me why, because she wasn't old enough. She, just, she was old enough to say, I never want to be married, Dad. I never want to have children. That's what she said to me, Vanessa. And so one night, Jonelle and I, we, we, we went into the way mornings talking about our stuff. And that's when we were delivered, Deacon Billy. We were delivered from all of our behaviors and all of our attitudes. We were delivered from all of our baggage. And then we started to learn, change, grow, and mature. We started to listen to each other. And when we started to listen to each other, we were able to start doing things so that we could grow together. And the moment that happened, my daughter Jordan said to me, Dad, are you going to cry when you walk me down the aisle? You don't understand. When she said that thing to me, my spirit resonated and tears started to flow down my face because of the change we made as husband and wife. Stay with me, y'all. I'm trying to keep married couples married. And I'm trying to give divorcees hope. Watch this. The Bible tells us, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Can I say it again? Shut up and just listen. Don't speak too fast. Just listen. Because you just may catch something. While you're listening, you don't know why that husband or wife is feeling the way they feel. Listen. I'm, talking, I'm trying to keep married couples married and give divorcees hope. Are y'all with me? James is helping us, Minister D, the importance of listening and doing. Watch this. So when I look at it, our marriage now, Jonelle and my marriage, I look at it with Jesus' love. And so no matter, and I'm not saying we don't have moments, because we do. We're imperfect beings. We're human. We make mistakes. We fall short. But now we have the tools and the resources to stay married. Stay with me here. Now we have the tools to be like-minded, the tools to be sympathetic and compassionate and humble. And we really do love one another. Amen. Are y'all with me? Listen, and where this type of love, if it doesn't exist, I'm going to tell you this, divorce is inevitable. Can I be real with you? Now, I do need to say, I am an advocate for marriage. I'm an advocate for marriage. Right? I'm an advocate for marriage. And whether you are a Christian or not, I need to let you know, even if you're divorced, there is hope and healing for you. Watch this. As Christians, it's said that, that, we, that there are consequences for divorce. I get it. Yeah. Right? But watch this. Someone said, Chris uh, Ballantin once said these words, and I quote, he's the founder and president of Moral Revolution. Here's what he writes, and I quote, there is no God solution to your problem. I'm talking about people who've divorced. No matter what the two of you do, you can never be blessed even though you're forgiven. You both screwed up, and you must live with it. End quote. Now, I can only imagine. If you had to contend with that type of comment, if you are thinking about divorce or, you've, or you are divorced, and let me say this, I will never contradict scripture. What I will do is remind you that God is a gracious God and a merciful God. And our situation may be painful, but God's grace is sufficient. Are y'all with me? And with the thought of divorce, there will always be questions. How do I move on? How do I heal? How do I survive? Y'all with me? And let me clarify something. There's nothing you or I can do when it comes to hope and healing. Are y'all with me? 
Now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. You or I don't have the capacity to heal ourselves or give ourselves hope. We don't have it. That is only from the office of Jesus. And if hope after divorce is possible, let me tell you why. I came across a blog by Tiffany Montgomery. And Tiffany Montgomery was sharing her story of her being divorced and what changes she needed to make to prepare her for her mate, her next mate. Watch this. Here are six of them. Watch this. It says, learn to pray to God for a mate. That's where some of us fell short. We didn't pray to God first for the right mate. We wanted to do it our way. My way or the highway. We learn how to do life after divorce. You don't have to live in your divorce just because you are divorced. You don't have to live there. Watch this. Learn the importance of trusting God after divorce. Don't trust nobody. Don't trust therapists. Now, let me say this. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with having a therapist to help you through your divorce. But it's very important that you know that God is your focus first. And you could couple that with therapy. Jonelle and I, we went to counseling, and there is no shame, even in our marriage. There is no shame in going to counseling. If you're divorced, there is no shame in going to counseling. Are y'all with me? I think that's the challenge we have in our communities today. We've, we put the stigma on counseling. And people go uh, still not healed, and they're taking that mess into another relationship or another marriage, never addressing the issue. Watch this. Bury yourself in God's word for divorce recovery. That's when you will learn and change and grow something for, about yourself because it is God's word that is leading you and guiding you and showing you what real love and relationship is supposed to be. Are y'all with me? It is continuing prayer to heal from divorce where after you've Remarry. You know what happens? After we get out our boo, we get our new boo. The new boo. Not 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 the ex boo, but the, the new boo. We get the new boo, right? And then we stop praying. Because now I got what I That's right. That's when you pray even more. Because you want to make sure that that ugly head doesn't rise up again in your I hope I'm helping somebody. I told you I wasn't qualified. Did I tell you I wasn't qualified? I, I'm, I'm not qualified to talk about divorce. But what I'm, I'm trying to keep married people married, and I'm trying to help divorcees to know that there is hope. Are y'all with me? And here it is. Learn how to stay pure after divorce. Don't start going back when you were single. And you start talking about the young lady you used to, or that dude you used to, when you were single with the place you used to go and, 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 and that dude that used to whisper sweet, mm -hmm. and that sister that had that Coke bottle, mm -hmm. Jesus, help us. I'm trying not to go back to those thoughts. But there were some things I didn't work on while I was single. And I'm, oh, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm bringing, oh, Jesus, Lord. Mm. I hope I'm helping you. I'm, hope I, I'm helping you. Watch this. But I need to let you know, those who've been divorced, that God will provide for your every need. Watch this. The word of God, Paul writes these words in Philippians 4, 19. He writes, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. In other words, God will provide, watch this, the strength you need, God will provide. The peace you need, God will provide. The faith you need, God will provide. The comfort you need, God will provide. The joy you need, God will provide. The happiness you need, God will provide. The perseverance you need, God will provide. The love that you need. 
And so I say all of this, Aaron. I say all of this to say, yes, there is hope after divorce. And that hope, however, only comes when you are willing to have an authentic relationship with Jesus. That you're reading his word. And it is in that word where you really get your love letter. <laughs> A love letter just for you. That love letter that inspires you to yearn for him. Call to him. Trust him. Chase after him and be available to him. That's why Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 helps us the importance of trusting. It says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall what? Direct thy path. Reflect. If we were to really reflect on those verses, you need to catch this. Here it is. Then we would trust in the sovereignty of God because he controls everything. Are y'all with me? That we, we won't get overwhelmed with ourselves and all the details because God is working everything out for our good. It's really that simple. We'll know that God wants to help you in and through everything, and you'll know that God will tell you what you need to do, how you need to do it, and what you need to know. And so our focal verse today, our focal verse today sums it all up. We've talked about it, and here it is. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast. Minds that are on him and not on our divorce, not on our circumstances, not on our issues, because we trust him. I hope y'all getting this. That it's important that we trust in the Lord forever. No matter the circumstances. You endure. You fight through it. Watch this. For the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. So who is Jesus to us? Jesus is our rock. He is our shield. He is our healer. And he is our hope. So to those brothers and those sisters, if you are living in divorce right now, I want to say to you, there is hope. Don't give up or don't give up on real love. But I want you to find real love first. And it's not in the human being. Real love is in Jesus. Hope is in Jesus. Healing is in Jesus. Deliverance is in Jesus. Forgiveness is in Jesus. You may say to yourself, I messed up. I failed. Because you're divorced. I failed. I made a mistake. I regret doing it. I don't know. Was I worthy? Am I worthy to be married again? Am I? Because I don't know if I can do this thing right. I want to say the devil is a liar. We all deserve love, Minister D. But I want to encourage you where, first of all, before you can love anyone else, you gotta love you. And you'll learn to love you when you love Jesus. You can't connect with someone else if you don't connect with yourself. Because when you when you don't connect with yourself, fear will always live in your life. Doubt will always live in your life, right? 
That failure will always live in your life. That All of that will always live. And, and as a divorcee, you will always feel that I did something wrong. It will always live and reside in your space. So whether you are a divorcee, or whether you are married, maybe you're struggling, or maybe you're married and things are well. Minister D is coming right now and she's going to pray for you, all three of you. Whatever category that is, whether you're divorced and you're believing God for another mate, but you want to do it right this time. You want to do it his way, right? Or you're married, but yet you're on the verge of divorce. We want to pray for you too. Or you're married and things are, are well. You have your moments, but things are well. We want to pray that you stay married. Come on, Minister D. She's coming now. In fact, I'm going to encourage all of you to stand to your feet. Amen. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. I don't know what category you, right. you fit in, what category you're in. I want to let you know there is hope. There is hope. Oh, thank you, Lord God. We just bless the name of the Lord for that message on this morning. Lord, we come before you on this morning, Lord God. Father God, because we know there's hope in you, Lord God. And where there's hope in you, Lord God, there's hope after divorce, Lord God. So Father God, I lift up our sisters and brothers this morning, Lord God, who are going through divorce, Lord God. Whose marriage is fine and all is well, but they have moments, Lord God, and who are considering now divorcing. Father God, we lift it all up to you, Lord God, because we know, Lord God, that you can meet the needs of your people at whatever place they're at, Lord God. Father God, I'm asking in your name, Lord God, if they don't know you, Lord God, that this will be the time to get to know you, Lord God. And Lord God, not only do they get to know you, but Lord they, God, they get to know themselves through you, Lord God. And while getting to know themselves, they get to know the person, Lord God that they are now deciding to divorce, Lord God, that are going through the divorce with, Lord God, and whose marriage is fine, Lord God, but it needs a little fine-tuning, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for bringing us together to have one another, Lord God, to just have someone, Lord God, to have and to hold, Lord. But there are moments, Lord God, when the have and to hold, Lord God, becomes a separation, Lord God. And there's nothing that no one, either of them, can no longer do. And Lord God, they just take that moment and say it's over. But Lord God, don't let them end their relationship with you, Lord God. Losing hope that they will never find love again. Because Lord God, you are the greatest love of all, Lord God. The only love of our life, Lord God. Who we can trust, Lord God. Help those, Lord God, who sing their husband and wives, Lord God, as persons of worship, Lord God. Using you as an afterthought, Lord God, and wondering why things are falling apart, Lord God. Help those couples right now, Lord God, who are going through contention, Lord God, who have children in the name of Jesus. And the contention is causing problems in their children, Lord God. Father God, let them know that children feel too, Lord God. That they have emotions too, Lord God. That their mental, Lord God, depends on what they see, Lord God. Kids adapt and adopt in the name of Jesus to what us parents give out and show them, Lord God. I pray today, Lord God, that our children know that we can be a refuge and a protector, Lord God. That we can be stable adults, Lord God who can help them go through, Lord God, even processes such as separation and divorce, Lord God. So I ask you to guard the hearts and minds of your kids today who are in situations where they feel like they have to make a choice between parents in the name of Jesus, Lord God. That they feel like they're irrevocably broken in the name of Jesus, Lord God. They feel in the stress and the overwhelmingness of it all. They feel like they got to love more, more parent, one parent more when they're with them and then the other parent more when they're over there, Lord God. And Father God, I'm asking you to help the parents who have now decided to have new relationships 
with the expectations that the kids and everyone else in the family has to fall in line. Father God, bring decency and order to these places and people who are going through this, Lord. And Father God, we ask, Lord God, that those who are considering divorce, that they seek out counseling, Lord God. They seek out the right support system. Because it's important that you have the right support system. That they seek someone who knows you, Lord God. Or who was to live by your will and your way and your standards, Lord God. To get rid of those girlfriends and guy friends, Lord God. Who speak against, Lord God, stability in the name of Jesus. Who speak against being together through thick and thin. Who speak against, Lord God, those things that are not like you, Lord God. That belong in our marriage. In our relationships. Build us up, Lord. Heal the wounds of those who are hurt and sick right now. Because moments like this can make you hurt and sick. Help their wounds. Bind them up, Lord God. Touch them in a mighty and special way. In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, we just want to stretch our hands this way and pray for the shepherd of this house on this morning. Father God, we're asking you, Lord God. We just ask you to bless Pastor Kevin on this morning, Lord God. Fill him up, Lord God, with everything that he put out into us, this atmosphere this morning, Lord God. Lord God, let him know that job well done, Lord God. Your faithful servant in the name of Jesus. Tenfold, press down, shaking over, overflow in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Let him leave out of here, Lord God, full and ready to face the world, Lord God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. We thank you and bless the Lord. Wasn't that a good sermon on this morning? Even if it didn't pertain to you or your situation, we got something out of it on this morning. It can go for other relationships too when there's contention. So if you're looking for a church home and you believe that Liberty and Life Nation is the place for you, do me a favor and text partner to 443-347-6658. We would love to have you in the building. We would love to have you online. We love fellowship. We love family. We love, we just love to love around here. But if you're looking for a church home and you don't know where to go and you don't believe Liberty is the place, do reach out because we can help you get into the place you need to be. Get in a good biblical teaching church with leaders who are after God's own heart. Can we say amen to that? Amen, amen. Now this is a portion of the service that we can all participate in. Deaconess Talisha, you want to come up here and help me? Come on up here and help me. Come on up here and help me, Deaconess Talisha. Yes, one of the leads over the finance team. That's right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We want to thank Pastor Kevin again for yeah. that wonderful word. Yes, yes. And there is hope after divorce. How do we know that? Because I'm a living witness. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and yes, we are at a great time of the service where we can all participate. This is time of our giving for our tithes and our offerings. Please yes. look at the screens for the way in which you can give both to Life Nation and Liberty Outreach Center. We both have online portals. We both have Cash App and Givelify, and you can always mail it in, and both addresses are on the screen. And when we all get our financial contributions together, we like to stand together and recite our given affirmations. Amen. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, and it's on the screen. We recite this together. I have because I give. I give because I have. God blesses the work that I do, and my labor is not in vain. I am a lender and not a borrower, above and not beneath, the head and not the tail. All of my needs are met in Jesus Christ according to his riches and not my own. God blesses me with more than enough always. So I faithfully give my tithes and offerings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hit, that Amen. Button. Hit that button. <laughs> Hit that button. Hit that button.
that button. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hit the button or see Deacon Billy at the door. And put your envelopes in the basket. He is waiting for you, cheerfully, as you can see. As you can see. <laughs> so, hey, y'all, we want to just remind y'all about this Tuesday. We have TNT, and we'll be talking about what? Divorce. And who will be teaching? None other than Deaconess Talisha herself. Give God a hand clap and a praise for that. And also, don't forget, we have our craft feast coming up in June. And then Pastor TJ is coming with us next Sunday, and he's going to close out the This Is Us sermon series. Can we give God a hand clap and a praise for that? We don't hear from him often, but when he come, boy, he come with a word from the Lord. So we bless the Lord for that. So now we're going to do our benediction and confession. Y'all going to get out here in this heat, go start up them grills, and enjoy yourself on this Sunday evening, right? So let's do it on three. One, two, three. We depart to live a life pleasing to Christ. We depart to meditate on and study the word of God. We depart to share the good news of Christ. And we depart to be what? Christ-centered. Have a great week, everybody.